Our meeting, um, Thursday, March 2nd. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dodge, here. <coughs> Commissioner Rice, here. Commissioner Lieberman, here. Uh, go to stand, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for America. which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to just get right into our county engineer. Paul? Good afternoon, commissioners, administrator, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a number of resolutions today. Uh, the first is Resolution 23-290 to authorize the closing of Mile Road between Snyder Road and Lutheran Church Road in Jefferson Township lasting approximately three days to gather geotechnical subsurface data relating to the Mile Road Bridge Project. 291 is to amend the agreement with Burgess and Nipple Inc. for the 2022 General Engineering Service contract by adding $200,000 to the original amount for a revised total of $700,000. That's to add a bridge design, a couple other things to it. Uh, two, and we have a couple to solicit bids. 292 is for the Free Pike Bridge Repair Project in the city of Trotwood at an estimated cost of $580,000. And 293 is 20, for the 2023 Crack Seal Program countywide at an estimated cost of $175,000. And then we have a couple of resolutions to permit encroachments of, of the public road rights of ways. 294 is for Shoot Mill Road in Harrison Township as part of the Shoot Mill Road Reconstruction Project. And 295 is for Huffman Road in Jefferson Township as part of the Huffman Road Bridge Replacement Project. And then we have some equipment purchases. 296 is for Murphy, Murphy Tractor and Equipment of a John Deere 545, 544 P-Tier Loader in an estimate estimate an amount not to exceed of $142,113. $297 is with Murphy tractor equipment of a John Deere 304L loader in an amount not to exceed $104,541. And $299.98 is with snap-on tools of a heavy-duty lift in an amount not to exceed $57,287.90. Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 What's a um, P tier loader? I'm just curious. It's, it's, uh, it's a front it's a big end loader. A front end loader? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. County Sheriff. Thank you, Commissioners. Under the County Sheriff, we have Resolution 299 authorizing a Memorandum of Understanding with South Community, Inc. for support of the Crisis Intervention Team at a cost not to exceed $85,509.42 through December 31st, 2023. We have Resolution 300, approve the Ohio Department of Public Safety Office of Criminal Justice Services pre-award condition forms for the Project Safe Neighborhoods Grant. Resolution 301, <coughs> accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Public Safety, Edward Bourne Mem Burn Memorial Justice Assistance Grant for the Regional Agency's Narcotic and Gun Enforcement Range Task Force in the amount of $47,575.20. We have two authorization agreements for the use of mobile data computer license on the Motorola Premier OneCAD platform. Resolution 302, Sinclair Community College, Department of Public Safety, at a cost of 5,000 each year with 5% annual increase through June 30th, 2028. In resolution 303, University of Dayton Department of Public Safety at a cost of 8,750 each year with a 5% annual increase through December 31st, 2027. And commissioners, as an added note, resolution 299, uh, this is the uh, jurisdictional um, support ride-alongs that we have mm -hmm. supported for behavior health for, mm -hmm. for police yeah. mm -hmm. in the jurisdictions. And thank you for your support mm -hmm. in this funding, yeah. commissioners, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so that our law enforcement agencies throughout the county have some level of support in behavior health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Michael, under 299, you know, that is becoming really a model throughout the country. And, um, and and from what I know, though, what the uh, city of Dayton's doing with the mediation teams is, is very similar to this, but it's also been very successful. So You're um, absolutely correct, yeah. Commissioner. It was actually featured, featured on 60 Minutes also. 
Ours was? So, not oh, ours, oh, but yeah. the, the national model that yeah, you're talking it about. It makes sense. Having law enforcement have a um, behavioral health contact or consultant that they mm -hmm. can work with in the case of mm -hmm. crisis. So uh, thanks for your support on this. This is, yeah. this is something mm -hmm. that uh, you all have supported, and we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also am just curious, maybe you don't know the answer to this, but you probably do. Um, on 300, <coughs> how is the sheriff um, involved in that? particular uh, safe neighborhoods um, effort? We, we get a, a grant. Uh, mm -hmm. We get a continued pre, this is a pre-award grant, but we get a grant every year uh, for investment in neighborhood opportunities. So uh, a lot of times they'll do block parties. Okay, or they'll that's do, how they fund the block um, parties. Okay. And they do a combination. They can use their FOJ resources yeah. also okay. to do these things. They can do all kinds of things with projects, safe neighborhoods throughout the community. That's great. And, it, and then on 301, it's just nice to see that we continue to get the uh, burn grants. That's yeah. always mm -hmm. very important for the um, sheriff's department. And okay. there are multiple different types of those, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, county prosecutor. Can you move for this? Yes, we you can. On behalf of the, just making sure, on behalf of Montgomery County Prosecutor Matt Heck Jr., we have Resolution 304. This is to amend the agreement with Terrence A. Grady and Kate R. Dotson of the firm of Terrence A. Grady and Associates, uh, COLPA, to assist the prosecutor's office in providing legal counsel and assistance to the Board of County Commissioners, the auditor, and any individual governmental members thereof in an amount not to exceed $25,000 through December 31st of 2023. Mm -hmm. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 County Administrator, Michael. Thank you, Commissioners. Under the County Administrator and the Clerk's Office, approve the minutes of the meetings on February 21st, 2023, Resolution 305, Approval of Bills, and Resolution 306, Approval of Travel and Expenses. Both those lists are available in the Clerk's Office. I move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Administrative Services, Tyler. Good afternoon, Commissioners. We have several resolutions for your consideration today, beginning with Resolution 307. This is the approval of personal actions. This list is available in the clerk's office. 308 authorizes an agreement with DHI Water and Environment Incorporated for consultant services for the Western Regional Water Reclamation Facility Process Optimization Study for the Environmental Services Department at a cost not to exceed $49,500 to December 31st of 2023. Resolution 309 authorizes a price agreement with Clean Lights Recycling Incorporated for electronic recycling services for the Environmental Services Department through February 28, 2026 with options to renew. Uh, Resolution 310 terminates the lease agreement with Harrison Township dated September 26, 1972 for the leasing of lots numbered 625 and 626 of the Woodland Heights subdivision and record the same. Uh, Resolution 311 authorizes the clerk to record a non-exclusive utility easement deed for use by the Environmental Services Department in order to construct, reconstruct, erect, add to, operate, maintain, use, remove, and replace underground water and sewer facilities on certain property owned by the Board of County Commissioners. 312 authorizes a, partic a participating addendum to the NASPO Value Point Agreement with Corporate Travel Management North America Incorporated for travel management services. Resolution 313 authorizes the purchase of five portable water filling stations and two water filling trailers from Quinch Buggy USA for the Environmental Services Department at their lowest and best bid of $230,900. Resolution 314 authorizes a lease option renewal with SP Proform LLC for the leasing of 1,200 square feet of office space for the Clerk of Courts Auto Title Division at a rate of $17.60 per square foot for an additional five-year period through June 30th of 2028. And that's all we have. Okay. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tyler, you getting any sleep? Tyler has a new baby. <laughs> is the baby? Yeah. Good. That's good. How old is he now? Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, we will go to Environmental Services, Matt. Good afternoon, Commissioners. <clears throat> For Environmental Services, we just have two resolutions. Uh, both of them are to authorize agreements for the preparation of detailed construction plans and supplemental specifications. Mm -hmm. The first is Resolution 315 with Choice One Engineering for the Green Hill and Hornwood Water Main Replacement Project in an amount not to exceed $99,800 through March 31st, 2025. 
And the last one is Resolution 316 with Fishbeck for the Flesher Rainbow Lead Service Line Replacement Project. It had cost not to exceed $299,528 through December 31st, 2024. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Human Services, Jessica. <coughs> Good afternoon. Resolution 317, authorizing an agreement with Jim's Group Home, Inc. for substitute care services through March 31st, 2024. And then Resolution 318, authorizing a memorandum of understanding with the Child Support Enforcement Agency to safeguard federal tax information in accordance with the state and federal requirements. Move to approve. Second. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, how are we going to safeguard that information? Just curious. So I believe there's a protocol and standard in place that really allows that to happen. So it's kind of really already prescribed what those methodologies okay, are. Okay, so we just need to do the memorandum. Yes, to just understand. really document okay. that process. Okay. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Just as an FYI, Commissioner, there's always a firewall between child support and the other services. And uh, so the memorandum really memorializes what that firewall looks like. Okay. We just want to be sure that we're, we're doing them right. Okay. Great. Um, did I say all those in favor? <laughs> I'm like yes. bored now. Yes, did we, we did. Did we vote on that? <laughs> okay. Um, comments by citizens. We do have one person signed up. Um, Mary Miller. Want to come up? You got to come up front if you, don't, if you can. That's okay. That's all right. And I will go ahead and read into the record your um, address. It's 229 Colgate Avenue, Dayton. And you're coming to talk to us about RTA. Yes. Okay. Is that fine? I'm going to sit. No, that's okay. Um, the reason I'm here, years ago, we had an RTA committee through the Community Action Partnership, which people began to see us everywhere. So we would get comments from the public, discuss them at a meeting, and the information would get back to RTA and they'd act on them or not. But there was a community connection. Now there isn't one. They have RTA board meetings, which we as public go to and allow three minutes, but we never get answers. And Mr. Williams has said he listens, he hears us, but other than that, they take no action. And I have personally extended my comments to Mr. Rosensky to better the situation at RTA because they are suffering miserably. He can't hire drivers. The drivers he hires, they don't stay. They get their CDL and they leave. The best person for the job would have been Chris Cole. He's now in Cincinnati. And a couple of the RTA old people have joined him because working under Mr. Rosinski is a hostile environment. He doesn't hear or see anything. October 3rd, 2021, the Dayton police had to be called to make him bring the buses back out because at 10 o'clock he chose to stop them, leaving people stranded at hubs and bus stops. So they called him out on it, get them back out there, take these people home. Unfortunately, the, the board members never heard of it until it was brought to their attention at the November meeting. This has to stop, or we're not going to have a working structure. His latest thing was to insult all of the students for Dayton Public, not just the ones that were guilty, but the entire student body. Dayton Public had a contract, and they would deliver the students, whether it was 6 a.m., 6 p.m., LS buses, or whatever. He came out and blatantly told them he didn't want them to ride his buses. First thing he needs to understand as a CEO, nothing is his. It belongs to the community you serve, which brings me to the tax dollars. 
we want to rescind some of his money because he's not providing a useful, efficient, or effective service. He's at every turn insulting people. This gets us nowhere. He's having a hiring fair that's not going to produce a whole lot because of his attitude. He does not hold a CDL. So how do you run a bus company that's short of drivers? You've been there over two years, haven't you figured it out? Go get one. Help yourself. My time's up. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, <clears throat> I know you understand the way it works, and, and I think by bringing this, you, you have you know, shared your feelings. Um, I'll, we can be sure that our board members that we appoint um, hear about what you've mm -hmm. said today. Have you gone to board meetings? And oh, yes, okay. ma'am. And you well, can you check them out on you YouTube. You get no answers. You can yeah. check them on YouTube. Yeah, okay. And okay. as a popular person, and because you do give your address, I actually received an anonymous letter from someone that said they had knowledge of a leak in the uh, diesel tanks that was not being addressed. Brought it up to them. Don't know if it was addressed, don't know if it wasn't. But if their diesel tanks are leaking water into the Great Miami, it's a problem. I could pull out all kind of little tidbits here and there, but I'll come back next week and share three minutes of new stuff. But it'll all involve RTA. That bus got me to and from school, and I think it should be there for the other kids. And unfortunately, they have to pay for their transportation. And that's why a lot of kids don't make it to school. So I will have more information next week. All right. Thank, Thank you for listening. For sharing Thank you. with us. Kenny Administrator, do you have comments for us? Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, last week, our purchasing department and uh, the support <laughs> offices uh, of the county held a small business workshop and uh, we got a chance to speak at the workshop, but we also got to speak to uh, business owners. Jim, myself and Judy were there, and it was pretty fantastic. We had a standing room only crowd there uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that we explain to our business community that the county is a uh, spender of dollars. Uh, we are a vendor, and we want to be a partner with the business community. So several of our department directors and our entire network, and we had attendees there. Uh, we had great participation from the business community. Uh, we work hard to have a diverse pool of vendors, and uh, commissioners, uh, that has been a key prong of yours, and we continue to do that outreach and that work to make sure that uh, we include our MBE, our women, our veteran-owned businesses to be a part of our vendors. Um, and we had a few of these similar events last year, so I would like to congratulate Kyle and his team. Kyle Colapanis is our purchasing director, uh, he and his team put this together, along with the support offices and the other electics that supported us uh, throughout the county. Uh, we appreciate the work uh, that our local businesses do, and we also appreciate being a partner with them. And uh, so thank you, commissioners, for your support in this endeavor, and we continue to do this kind of outreach to increase our vendor pool. Yeah, thank you. I was there. It was a wonderful turnout. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I bet there were close to 100. It was great. Yeah, it was that great. great. Yeah. So um, Tuesday morning, I was able to attend the ribbon cutting along with Commissioner Rice for the brand new Goodwill Easter Seals West Campus Service Center in Trotwood. Now they're located on East Main Street in Trotwood, and they're very close to our new Dayton. Um, Wait a minute, the w Montgomery County Western Regional Municipal Court, which is going to be opening in a few weeks, and also very close to the Dayton Metro Library branch. And, you know, this part of our county just keeps growing and continues to focus on services for families, which is so important. And Goodwill does so much for our citizens. The center will have specialized job training and behavioral health services, along with adult day support services, educational and safety programming, a computer lab, and other valuable features. And so congratulations to Goodwill. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely. It was, uh, it's actually a gorgeous facility. Mm -hmm. And the um, Miami Valley Child Development Center, they're opening mm -hmm. in the back. And mm -hmm. that's going to be 50 additional 
uh, little ones that get yeah. to take advantage yeah. of Head Start. So it's like an expansion of that. So that's pretty awesome. Definitely needed. Yep, absolutely. I also wanted to, last night I attended uh, DATV's uh, 45th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so I want to take this uh, opportunity to thank them for all the years that they have um, filmed our meetings. And I learned a thing or two about their history, quite interesting, and it was quite a crowd there. So uh, happy anniversary, DATV. As I told you last night, you are certainly a jewel in our um, community, and we hope that you'll be around for many, many, many years to come. So thank you for the service that you provide. Also wanted to um, say that you know we recently um, celebrated President's Day, although that's already starting to feel like weeks ago. I don't know about you, a week feels like a month sometimes. And uh, I know that there are, have been big sales on uh, major appliances, so you, you may have all those big uh, cardboard, but the important part is the styrofoam that might be in there. So we're teeing you up for the next um, styrofoam event. Our uh, first one of this year was um, in Centerville right after, and uh, that was our biggest one yet. Uh, so it is taking off. People are learning about it, and it's growing. So our next one uh, will be coming up before we know it on Earth Day, April 22nd. Uh, this time uh, it will be at the Rose Music Center in Huber Heights, and it will be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and uh, so I think the total, we've kept more than 11 tons of styrofoam out of the landfill. That's quite an accomplishment so far. And if we keep growing it, growing it, we're going to make those numbers skyrocket, I hope. So hang on to your styrofoam. Come on up to the Rose Music Center on April 22nd and help us celebrate Earth Day. So that's what I have this week. Right. That is a great way to celebrate Earth Day. You know, the one that we had in Centerville, to fill up the whole semi with styrofoam was like, seriously? So then we were talking to the guys, that the company that we use, and they said, oh, yeah, and that will be compressed down to about yeah. this big, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's, It's all air. Exactly. It's all air. So we filled up a semi and a, and a panel truck. So this next time, let's go get We're going two for two. Semis and saving my styrofoam. Mm -hmm. But none of the food containers because they can't yeah. take that. So yeah, don't want anybody to be uh, yeah, not happy dirty. when they've right, saved right, right. those yeah. and then we can't yeah. take them. That's right. Thanks, Carolyn. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is um, our collaboration that Children's Services has with St. Vincent de Paul Shelter. Um, you know, I think most people probably know we have uh, separate, separate. Gateway has the single men. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul um, on Apple Street has our women and children. Um, and last year, the two um, groups, our children's services team and St. Vincent's, brainstormed about how could we better support families that are experiencing homelessness. And so we now have an assigned caseworker, Kobe Cooper, who is based at that Apple Street shelter. And Kobe is there to connect families to um, available assistance that, you know, if you're homeless, you may feel overwhelmed and you don't even know where to go. And so Kobe's now there um, to help families um, get connected with programs like Head Start and other, other um, safety net programs that uh, are available. Mm -hmm. So because of that collaborative work, um, the shelter has been able to apply for and receive to date, which though I'm sure there'll be a lot more, but 25000 in grants for families. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, every little bit is so important, especially as we see, if anybody's been paying attention and reading the stories in the national press, I mean, a lot of people are homeless right now. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just glad that the work that we do, Jessica, thank you for the work that you do um, and your team because... Um, be worse we, it could be I mean we look at what we have and <clears throat> some of the cities in our country it's just unbelievable I mean where my son lives up in Anchorage it, uh, he works at a homeless youth shelter and you think Anchorage really but 
it's incredible the homeless there and so and they're a much smaller city region than us in fact our county is almost bigger population than the whole state of Alaska but the homeless there it's it's just oppressive and so I, I do really applaud us Ohio for what we do um, around our unhoused that um, yeah again it could be worse it could also be better Oh, we, want we it wish better. no one had to be homeless, but um, thanks. Thank you. Okay, unless anybody else has something to mm -hmm. add, uh, we will be here, uh, right back here next Tuesday. And I can't get back to my notes. What's the date? March 7th. March 7th. Wow, happy March, everybody. We're almost to spring. Um, yep. So, yeah, we'll be here March 7th, and I'll end Move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody.